In 80 days, adventurer and award-winning filmmaker Paul G. Roberts retraces the global footsteps of Phileas Fogg, hero of Jules Verne's most famous work. Castel de Lobo is an imposing castle that rises out of the sea on a small island connected to the mainland by a footbridge. It overshadows a small marina filled with sailing boats and is surrounded by a plethora of smart seafood restaurants. You can climb the ramparts of the ancient castle and it's a Norman castle, one of the many civilizations that have conquered Naples in its many year history. It marks the site where the very first Greek settlers actually formed a, a colony here, which was some 2,500 years ago. Every city in Italy has its main square, or piazza, the town's central meeting point. It dates back even before Roman times. And for Naples, it's Piazza Plebiscito. Piazza Plebiscito, once called Lago di Palazzo, 
is the most famous square in all of Naples and the one representing the city as could be the Colosseum of Rome. The name dates back to the plebiscite of October 21, 1860, the day on which the Kingdom of the Two Sicilies was united to Piedmont of the Savoy. The piazza is very close to the Gulf of Naples and is bounded by the Royal Palace on the east and the Church of San Francesco di Paola on the west, with its hallmark twin colonnades extending to each side. And on this morning, there was a strong smell of urine in the air, probably from the many homeless who shelter under its porticos. But hey, when you're homeless, when you gotta go, you gotta go. Occasionally, the square is commandeered for open air concerts. And artists who have formed here include local and international stars, including Elton John, Maroon 5, Muse, and in May 2013, even Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band gave a concert at the venue. And the last time I was here several years ago, it was Dolce and Gabbana who had a mega fashion parade right in the square. And down by the cruise ships is Castel Nuovo. Castel Nuovo, often called Maschio Angioina, is a medieval castle located in front of Piazza Municipio and the City Hall, Palazzo San Giacomo. It's the headquarters of the Neapolitan Society of Homeland History and the Naples Committee of the Institute for the History of Italian Risorgimento. In the complex, there is also the Civic Museum, which includes the Palatine Chapel and the museum's paths on the first and second floor. Behind the restored Gothic Basilica of the same name, you'll find this network of cloisters belonging to the closed order of Santa Chiara. Bombed by the Allies during the Second World War, the vast complex's walkways are lined with blossoming orange trees covered in bright majolica tiles, depicting the 18th century Neapolitan scenes. It's a cultural oasis, smack bang in the city's chaotic centre. The ornately decorated cloisters provide a much needed slice of calm after a long day avoiding mopeds and three-wheeler Piaggio Apes. This street it's called Spacca Napoli because it splits Naples in two. So can you see? It's just cut in two from San Martino down to the port. And back again to the Vicoli. This is the city's most famous alleyway, dedicated to the selling of all things kitsch and especially nativity-based souvenirs. This is one of the oldest streets in Naples. It's called the San Biagio dei Librai. And soon we're going to cross a small street that is famous for handmade pastori, which is our tradition for Christmas, where they make um, pastori for the nativity. Sneak away from the crowds into the hidden cloister of the San Gregorio Amino Church with its 17th century enclosed garden filled with citrus trees. It's only open for two hours in the morning before the nuns reclaim it for themselves. In Italy, the only belief system to rival that of the church here is that of football. And its much loved poster boy in Naples is the inimitable and late Diego Maradona. If you go to the stadium named after him, for formerly the San Paolo Stadium to watch SSC Napoli, you'll likely be rewarded with a world-class match. They now play in Italy's top league, Serie A, and right now they are the league's top team. And when you go, you will be surrounded by 50,000 or more cheering fans, chanting for a goal guaranteed to have goosebumps too. Remember to make the pilgrimage to Bar Nilo afterwards and visit the Requery containing a strand of Maradona's hair. Piazza Bellini 
is the go-to meeting point for the young and thirsty of Naples. This bar-lined square bubbles over with students, locals, tourists, come aperitivo time and beyond. There are some ancient ruins, casually left unprotected and often covered in rubbish at the square's centre. The walls at Intra Moenia are covered with rows and rows of vintage postcards and curios. Buy one to send home and then claim a table outside to sit back and enjoy your aperitivo as the crowds gather. Gesù Nuovo, over in the west of the city, is a spacious piazza and it's home to the almost brutalist looking facade of a church called Gesù Nuovo. Learn more about Dr. Giuseppe Mascati, who dedicated his career in the early 19th century to healing the poor. Thanks to a miracle or two, he was made a saint in 1987. And fun fact, there was a statue of him featured on the very same floor at the hospital where I had my surgery. Thank you, Dr. Giuseppe. One might think that after my time at the Met in New York City, I'd be all antiquitied out. But no. And here, they have a very special erotic art collection from those dirty-minded folks at Pompeii. The Archaeological Museum houses Naples' most significant collection of Roman remains and displays much of the loot uncovered during the digs at Pompeii and Herculaneum. It may hold a treasure trove of ancient artefacts and statues, which when taken together pretty much laid the foundations for the Western canon of art as we know it today. But it's the erotic art from Pompeii, hidden in a tucked away room, that's the real draw here. Of the three islands in the Bay of Naples, Capri is the most absurdly beautiful. That also means it's constantly smothered by tourists. Ischia offers thermal spas, but its progenitor's charming colourful houses on cobblestone streets makes it the under-the-radar offshore choice. The pretty fishing village of Coricella had a starring role in the talented Mr. Ripley, the most aesthetically pleasing of all Jude Law's great works, apart from Chocolat, of course. And now for some more on death. Do you see dead people? Beneath the heat and bustle of Naples streets is an old quarry that became the burial site in the 17th century when a plague wiped out 250,000 of the city's residents. Though the Fontenelle Cemetery's piles of bones are undeniably unnerving, the local tradition of caring for a lost soul's skull lends the place a very spiritual feel. The cemetery is currently closed, but has plans to open again depending on how the autumn goes. Watch out for the odd Italian nonna on her way to tend the designated skeleton in the hope of releasing its soul to heaven in return for a wish. And just so if you need a reminder that my theory that Naples is a place that ends in fire just walk with me for a little bit. You all know about Pompeii already, of course, but it's genuinely overwhelming in real life. The town's perfectly preserved streets manage to remain eerie despite the rivaling the footfall of Times Square on a Saturday. Always nice to be reminded that humans are ultimately at the mercy of Mother Nature. Few things say carpe diem, like the plaster cast of a corpse of a Pompeian who'd been looting a jewellery shop. The more things change. Pompeii may well have gotten all the glory, if being wiped out by a volcanic eruption can be considered in such a way, but nearby Herculaneum also got completely engulfed by lava 
and revealed even better preserved scenes of everyday Roman life. A row of 12 boathouses, for instance, which were once excavated in the 1990s, turned out to be the final hiding place of more than 300 people. Though still popular with visitors, you actually get a bit more personal space at Herculaneum, and what better way to get to grips with such gruesome and fascinating history? Naples, sempre magical, sempre misteriosa.